Hey everybody, um, I told you guys I would show you how I do my favorite venison dinner, so I'm going to do that right now. Um, I use a, like a pie pan, and I dump in a bunch of flour. I don't really measure it, and I eyeball it by how much I think I'll need. This is a one cup thing here. Yeah, one cup should be plenty, maybe three quarters of a cup, because I still got some left in there. Then, I just take my favorite seasonings um, today. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw in some chopped onion, some bacon chipotle, I love this McCormick stuff, and some smoky Montreal. Now, I don't do measurements, never have, I always just eyeball things, like I'm going to throw in a bunch of these onion flakes here, um, dump in a bunch of this bacon chipotle, good bunch, and then I'm going to dump in some of the smoky Montreal. Now I eyeball all this. I'll use a fork. I'll just kind of mix it up. I mix all the seasonings into my flour. I've done the same thing when I'm making up my own homemade uh, fish batter. I mean, obviously I use different things. Like I prefer lemon, lemon pepper seasoning and stuff like that for fish and garlic. But uh, for venison, I try to stick with more of a steak type thing. And then, I mean, I know when it's ready, you'll get a different color. It's not the normal white. And then I smell test it. If I can smell all them seasonings in there, I know it's good to go. I am going to throw a little bit more. Because I like mine pretty well seasoned. I'm going to throw some more of these onion flakes. Because I want them to get into that meat. That would be excellent. Okay. Now that we got the flour made up, this is going to be our batter. This meal, by the way, is my chicken fried venison steaks. I've been cooking this for years, and it works for people that don't like venison. They like this. Got a couple little steaks here. These are nothing perfectly cut because this is all stuff that I've done myself. Um, I'm going to get the stove going right now. I'm going to put it on high heat, get that fryer. I'll put it on medium high, get the fryer all the good oil going. I like to use uh, bacon grease because it gives it that extra bit of flavor. Now first thing I do, I uh, pat my steaks here in my flour. Get it nice and patted in there. Then I use my old meat tenderizer here and I smack it right on in there, that flour. That will not only tenderize the meat, but it pushes some of the it pushes the flour and the seasonings into the meat. And then I pat it right back in the flour again. Get her nice and get her nice and double coated there. That's gonna give you a good good mix there in the batter or in the fryer. Yeah, this makes almost like a little breading on it. Now I'm also gonna be using this same flour for the gravy. Yeah, I've been cooking this recipe here for a long time, and it's always been one of my favorites. I just recently started doing a little twist on my own recipe, and I'm going to be showing you tonight how I do that. So that makes it a little better. Okay, yep, these are all nice and ready to go. I always put part of the steak down in the oil. If I hear it sizzling, yep, she's sizzling nicely. I'm going to turn the camera around here. Might not be able to fit that big guy in there right now. Yep, now I'm going to let these sizzle for just a bit here, and uh, I'll show you how they're supposed to look. I'm going to put the cover on it. It's going to help things cook a little bit here. All right, guys, it's only been a couple minutes here. Um, I don't let these go long. Once you get that nice, if you flip it, you see you got that nice little crisp on the outside. That's all you want. I'm going to flip her over. I'm going to let her go for, these two will take a little bit longer because they're thicker. Um, but I'm only going to let these go for a minute or so. 
That's that's where most people get it wrong when they're doing venison, and it's what causes people not to like venison. It is a meat that if done wrong, it is horrible. If you if you let this go too long, it's going to become so tough. It's like boot leather. You don't want that. Yeah, I never want my venison more than medium rare. I mean, if you go, and even that, I try to try to go on, on the rare side a bit with my venison because you overdo that and it's, it's pretty, well, pretty well ruined. But as you can see, it's got a nice, nice little breading on the top, nice and crisp. All right, these are good and done. Got a nice crisp outside, but I can still get the fork into them. If you can't just stick your fork in without any pressure, then you know you've overdone them. Good to keep an eye on the oil because it does burn quickly. You don't want to let it get burnt. I got enough in here that I should be able to finish these off. All right, I just dumped the oil out of the pan. The steaks are all done. I am now going to dump four cups of milk into the pan. Which I made the mistake today of forgetting we were low and uh, I didn't get any so we had to make some powdered milk which hopefully doesn't affect it. But yep, four cups of milk into the pan. Then I take it doesn't matter what packet it is. I take some store-bought gravy mix. Um, this takes two uh, cups of milk, so that's why I want four. What I do is I use a packet of gravy worth two cups of milk, and then I'll do my own mix for the rest. This gives it a really nice, really nice mixture here. Today I'm going to be using this Pioneer Peppered. I like to use peppered gravy or country gravy. Because with milk gravy, that's how it's supposed to taste anyway. Dump all that in there. And take my little measurement daily and my seasoned flour. I take one, two, three. I take four tablespoons of my seasoned gravy mix. A whisk. Mix all this up. The gravy really needs to keep, you got to keep good attention on the gravy because if you don't stir it enough it'll get clumpy and you don't want that. So usually I will just sit here and I will whisk this until it starts to thicken up, which doesn't take long. Actually, it's starting to do it now. It all depends on how hot you got the pan, really. Yep, she's thickening up already. See, that only took took less than a minute with that mixture to get this gravy. And I'll tell you, that's a rich, nice, thick gravy. Perfect for mashed potatoes or throwing over some biscuits. I just keep it going till it's nice and thick. Now it's now it's real thick, and I will shut the stove off. That gravy is done. I'm gonna put the cover on it here to keep it hot. Now I'll show you the next step. Now final step here in my dish, guys, because I am I mean I'm a potato nut, so mashed potatoes it don't really matter. I like to do these little homemade potato chips to throw my stuff on. So I got my deep fryer here all nice and heated up and with these sadly you can't throw them all in at once because they clump up together so I have to sit here and drop each and every one carefully into the deep fryer. I'll tell you though this uh this is the first gear that I've tried it with with chips and it really really makes for a good recipe. I used to do all this with mashed potatoes, but the mashed potatoes are also a little more time consuming. 
So this makes for a slightly quicker dish. This is actually potatoes grown in my garden. Mom cleaned up, uh, I believe it was three or four of our big potatoes. And I just sl sliced them up as thin as I could. I used my fillet knife actually. I use that thing for pretty much everything. All right. Now I'm just going to let these go until they're good and crispy, and uh, then I'll show you what I do. All right, I gave the french fries some time here to get good and crispy. Oh yeah, that's the noise you want to hear with fries. Or I should say potato chips when I thin slice them like that. I like to dump them out on a paper towel, let them, let them drain just for a little bit here. It's hard to beat the... Uh, I mean, yeah, the store-bought ones are good and all, but I'll tell you, you get these fresh potatoes grown out of the garden, you get that nice gold color. That's the way a potato's supposed to look. So, yep, now I'm going to unplug the fryer. Things are all done. I'm going to show you how I set all this stuff up. All right, this is how I plate all this up. First, I throw my steaks on here. I'm eat two of these bad boys, nice breaded steaks. Then, I grab a nice handful of fresh potato chip fries just like that and boom I take my homemade gravy here dump that all over just smother this whole thing in gravy and I'll tell you what you try this let me know what you think because I guarantee you're gonna love this this is an excellent excellent meal I hope I was able to teach you guys something with this and let me know what you think because this is by far my favorite venison dish so i really recommend it and i hope you guys give it a try medium rare cooked right to perfection mm. that's an awesome meal